All right, well, let's take a look at the top talkers of the day. All right, earlier this week, I got to say before we get into this, I told Brittany I was not going to talk about this guy anymore. But it's You're just hard not to. Mm -hmm. All right, the race for the GOP nomination, it's just becoming more and more bizarre, thanks to Mr. Donald Trump. It's becoming almost like a weekly occurrence here, guys, a daily occurrence at that, that the actions and the words of the presidential hopeful are making headlines. This past Saturday, Trump stirred the pot with some incendiary comments towards Senator John McCain about his status as a war hero in, re in relation to his capture by Vietnamese soldiers. Speaking at a family leadership summit in Iowa, Trump said, quote, he was a war hero because he was captured. I like people who weren't captured. Way to stay classy, Trump. Statements set off a firestorm throughout the country with many people calling for Trump to apologize. Clearly, they don't know that an apology is against Trump's brand. And just yesterday, speaking at a rally in South Carolina, Trump read a phone number that he said people could use to reach out to South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham's private cell number. Quote, give it a shout, Trump said, urging people to call the state's senator. Graham's camp seems to be taking the move in stride, however. Immediately after the rally, Graham's campaign manager released a statement saying the only people excited about Trump's presidential bid are President Barack Obama and the 2016 Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton. Quote, because of Trump's bombastic and ridiculous campaign, we aren't talking about Obama's horrible deal with Iran or Hillary Clinton's plans to continue Obama's failed national security agenda, end quote. Furthermore, Graham himself took to Twitter saying, quote, probably getting a new phone, iPhone or Android. So, you know, regardless of what it is, Trump is just taking swings at everyone mm -hmm. in the Republican Party. GOP leaders are telling him enough is enough. Stop. He's just going further and further. And I think a lot of it is because... He did have a stint, you know, as you know, on Celebrity Apprentice. Uh, Apprentice. He has spent years in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. He is not thinking, and this is my opinion, he is not thinking of the larger deal, that as President of the United States, you are looking to, to unite, yep. unite the country. Mm -hmm. He is being so incredibly divisive just in his own party. What are you going to do when you get to the general electorate? What are you going to do? That's my big question. So are, are you doing this just to, you know, to get in the spotlight more? Or do you really have an agenda to make America better? That's my question. If you don't have the latter, get off the podium and let someone on there that does. I think there's That's a all I got lot of people that. who agree with yeah. you, Chad. All right, switching gears, I have some fantastic news for people of my generation or anyone who is a fan of 1990s boy bands. Backstreet Boys and NSYNC are joining forces for a movie. What? But listen... This is not just your average run-of-the-mill movie. It's a horror movie entitled Dead 7, and it is a zombie western. So basically, it's everything that we have always wanted. It's being produced by the company responsible for the Sharknado franchise, so you know it's going to be good. Now, Backstreet Boys <laughs> member Nick Carter is starring in the drama and writing the script, which revolves around a ragtag band of gunslingers who join forces to fight off a zombie invasion. So far, Joey Fatone is the only member of NSYNC on board, so no telling whether or not Mr. Justin Timberlake will be joining the team. Also starring in the zombie movie are Backstreet Boys' Howie Durrell and AJ McLean. Nick Carter says that he might even reach out to Jordan Knight from New Kids on the Block as well. The project doesn't have a director in place yet, and really? it isn't known if they're targeting a theatrical release or not. They are still in early stages of development, so for now, you're going to have to settle with watching the boy band's old music videos like we've been doing all morning. And that's why Chad was Tell me why! <laughs> yes, because this is what we've been doing all morning. Nick Carter, tell me why you think this is going to be a good movie. It's going to be the best movie ever! Well, you know... I'm so excited for this You know, movie. all kidding aside, Sharknado has definitely carved itself out, you know, in, in the cults. The Have you seen world. the Sharknado movies? Absolutely not. They're on Netflix Absolutely. if you oh, want to watch them. Oh, <laughs> I know. And I guarantee he's talking about, I'm not sure if it's going to be a theatrical release. Mm -hmm. I, I think I can make a prediction right now. That's not going to happen. I don't know, It's going to go straight to this Netflix. This is going to be a big one. It, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. This is going to win all the awards. <laughs> all the Razzies? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Not the Razzies, Chad. The real ones. The, the real Z's. The, the real Z's, not the Razzies. That's the right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, speaking of movies, guys, lastly, Londoners went back to the future as the 80s comedy celebrates its 30th anniversary. Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, Leah Thompson, and the supporting cast of the trilogy, trilogy joined forces together this past Sunday at London's film 
and Comic-Con, and great Scott, do they look good, especially Leah Thompson. She has not aged a bit. The trio of stars were in London promoting the re-release of the trilogy in theaters October 21st and a special edition DVD Blu-ray the same week. The stars reminisced about the making of the film, including Michael J. Fox's late arrival as Marty McFly, replacing Eric Stoltz in the iconic role. Uh, in addition, Fox admitted that the DeLorean, which was custom-built to fit Stoltz, was a nightmare to drive. Quote, the money it would take to get me back into the DeLorean again is a lot, Fox said. In addition, Thompson, who played Lorraine, Marty's mother, said that the prom night scene, the prom night makeout scene, fisticuff scene, was one of her favorites. Lloyd reflected on the immediate relationship that he struck up with Fox as the eccentric yet brilliant Doc Brown. And when asked how well they think the movie predicted the future, Fox said, quote, one thing the movie got completely right was my receding hairline. <laughs> it nailed that, unfortunately. Again, guys, mark your calendars for October 21st when the trilogy will head back to the theaters for a whole new generation to enjoy. Mm -hmm. You can get new DVD Blu-rays. And incidentally, it's, a, it, it's just a, an image that floats around, floats around on Facebook. October 21st, 2015 is the date in the future on the DeLorean, which is why the movie is coming out oh, October 21st. Oh, yes. Yeah. A classic. It is. You know, and there was rumblings around Hollywood of a, of a remake. Leave I don't that want, one. I, they should Leave just do this. There are some just movies that you this. don't need to remake. Yeah. Just put them back in theaters, mm -hmm. pump just them back the in, and let release. the younger kids, you know, yep. see what, what we saw. Yeah, because I, could, so I cool. you know, it's and it's interesting. If you go online and you dig enough, you can find the footage of Eric Stoltz, because they shot a good amount of footage okay. of Eric Stoltz as Marty McFly, and it's weird. Mm -hmm. It's just weird. So I cannot imagine someone stepping in, especially Doc Brown. Yeah. Christopher Lloyd put that one to bed. No one else could touch that role. Mm. 